Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to celebrate with you today, if only via video. As you're aware, fostering sustainable development and tackling climate change are two sides of the same coin. And climate change has increasing repercussions to the issues of sustainable development, such as food security and natural ecosystems. Therefore, post-2015 Sustainable Development Agenda and Sendai Disaster Risk Reduction Framework emphasize the importance of climate and weather resilience and risk reduction, as well as the essential roles of quality, timely data and evidence-based decision-making. The new Sustainable Development Goals include a standalone goal on combating climate change, but all the SDGs incorporate in their design and targets resilience and mitigation drivers. To eradicate poverty and achieve sustainable development, the post-2015 agenda must be supported by adequate means of implementation through a renewed and credible global partnership. National governments should align their development plans and programs with the SDGs to ensure economic, environmental and social sustainability. They must also provide the appropriate support for local governments who will be key players in public service delivery to ensure equal access of basic services. All stakeholders must be involved in the implementation and monitoring of the new agenda. By partnering with a responsible private sector, we also have the potential to mobilize trillions of investment opportunities, especially in infrastructure. Furthermore, civil society engagement will serve as one of the cornerstones of accountability at all levels. The UN system must also be fit for purpose, leading by example and supporting implementation at the country level. I'm encouraged to see that the WMO is undertaking internal discussions on WMO governance and how WMO can contribute to the monitoring of the implementation of the post-2015 agenda. The new WMO strategy plan will be essential in integrating sustainability, including climate science, into decision-making at all levels. Improving the capabilities of the national meteorological and hydrological services will allow for the production of better weather, climate, water, and related environmental information, thus improving forecasting and early warnings, as well as supporting strategies for disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation and mitigation. We must also improve access and development of observation systems for weather, climate, and hydrological observations. The standardization and exchange of related data, as well as the transfer of technology, is going to be essential. The Global Framework for Climate Services serves as an important global partnership, guiding development and application of climate information and services to support decision makers to better manage risks and opportunities, especially in developing countries and vulnerable states. We must also enhance the pathways to women's empowerment, and I'd like to commend WMO's support for the UN Interagency Women's Leadership Program. Ladies and gentlemen, climate and disaster resilience building is critical to eradicating poverty and achieving the sustainable development agenda. And I look forward to WMO's continued engagement with all ongoing processes, as well as in particular the implementation and the monitoring of the post-2015 development agenda. Thank you.